Hi, and welcome back. So, I've finally arrived as an influencer. You're looking at a guitar that I was offered for free if I agreed to feature it in a video. And finally, I'm beginning to see some real rewards from the channel. Okay, so don't get too excited. It's made by Glarry, and it's as cheap as chips, as we say over here. I mean, quite remarkably affordable. This costs a lot less than my first electric guitar did back in the tail end of the 1980s, even without adjusting for inflation. So here's my quick little review. Out of the box, it had a little fret buzz on one string, but the action was also set lower than I like it, and once I'd fixed that, the fret buzz was gone. The intonation seems okay, the neck feels nice enough, fret ends aren't too sharp, everything seems to work okay. It's a lot better than I remember my first guitar. So being honest, the pickups don't sound that great. The bridge pickup has too much harshness around 3K, and not enough sparkle around 6. While the neck pickup sounds a bit woolly and dull, as if the tone control was rolled down. But actually, I did find some surprisingly nice tones with both pickups on. And I feel a little churlish making those criticisms of a guitar at this price point anyway. There are actually two models currently on their website that sport upgraded Wilkinson pickups. In fact, I requested those initially, but was told there were none in stock in the UK. Perhaps that was just a polite way to say my channel isn't big enough yet. Anyway, better pickups are probably worth the extra money, as it's not a huge price difference. But if you're a beginner, these bog-standard pickups I've got here will be fine. And that's all you'll be hearing in this video. I'll be using the Glarry for all the guitar parts. So let's talk about that guitar patch from my Headphones Are Not Stereo video. And a bit of background first. Way back in the 1990s, I decided to buck the guitarist trend and go for a rack mount multi-effects unit rather than a big sprawling pedal board. There were a couple of reasons for this. It seemed a more robust and gig-proof solution than a collection of pedals on a board. But mostly, I liked being able to switch instantly from highly affected sounds to classic raw guitar tones, without needing to do the dance of a dozen pedals. I picked a Digitech unit called a Valve FX, as it gave me all the effects I needed, plus a Valve preamp, at a decent price. And perhaps to compensate for the lack of a big pedal board, I paired it with the biggest MIDI foot controller in the shop, with not one, but two expression pedals. Now here's the thing. Digitech, frankly, did a terrible job designing this thing. They basically just took a studio effects unit, and a rather complex and difficult to use one at that, and bolted on a guitar-style preamp. For example, the main, and really only, EQ option is four-band fully parametric, with every band able to sweep the whole range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And choosing which effects are loaded in which order requires looking up algorithms in the manual. No attempt was made whatsoever to make this friendly and easy for a typical guitarist to use. However, I wasn't your typical guitarist, as I was already moonlighting as a live engineer, and these things didn't scare me. And as I learnt to program the unit, I quickly realised that those two expression pedals on my MIDI controller had a lot more potential uses than just volume and wah. In fact, literally any parameter that you could edit within a patch could be linked to a MIDI controller, with minimum and maximum settings so you could control the range or reverse the control direction. And you could link up to 10 parameters for each preset. I found lots of fun ways to use that capability, but probably the best is the one I'm about to show you, which I've kept a secret until today. All the people that tried guessing what I was doing in the comments lacked that one important piece of information. You need an expression pedal to do this properly. And it starts as just a simple volume pedal, like so. I'm using guitar rig for this, but it doesn't really matter what you use. Probably every guitarist that's ever tried a volume pedal has also tried following it with big reverbs and delays. I needed a combination of both on the Digitech to pull this off. But in plug-in land, I can do it with just a delay, assuming that delay can do multiple taps and diffusion. Okay, so that sounds nice enough. 
you can create some nice ambient textures like this. Cool. But let's take it further. And this is where Timeless 3 takes the crown as the current best option, as it provides all the necessary MIDI control and modulation, meaning this should be reasonably easy to set up in most DAWs. My expression pedal is kicking out MIDI controller number 11, so I'll pick that, and I'll link this controller to the feedback parameter. But I'm going to reverse the direction, so pushing the pedal up reduces the feedback. And I want to set the feedback knob to around 100%, so when the pedal is down, the delays keep circulating forever. Adding a touch of one knob compression can help to make the plugin less fussy about exactly how high that needs to be. Now I can fade in a note or a chord with the pedal, but then immediately pull the pedal back again. And I can catch that note or chord in the feedback loop so that it sustains basically forever. Or until I fade in a different note or chord, or until I end it by pushing up the pedal without playing anything. It takes a little practice to get used to this, but it's not that hard. And when you get the hang of it, you get a much more expressive and controllable way to create those kinds of ambient guitar textures. Chords no longer all have to blur into one another as they do when you're just swelling into a big reverb effect. Now you can follow the changes clearly and distinctly, while still sounding more like some kind of synth pad than a guitar. And unlike a synth pad, you also have the option to hit a chord with the pedal fully up instead of fading it in. And create a harder attack. Or also fun, if you sustain a chord or note, but then very briefly push up the pedal on a different chord or note, you can blur the two together and blend them inside the delay loop. Of course, that last one is very dependent on the length of delay time you're using. The shorter the delay time, the quicker you'll have to be with the volume pedal to achieve that blurring effect. But conversely, the longer the delay time, the slower and gentler your pedal sweeps will need to be to avoid it when you want each new chord to take over completely. And of course, the delay times also affect the resulting sound. Longer delays can create a smoother, more pad-like texture. while shorter delay times will sound grainier and perhaps more obviously cyclic. You can also play with different patterns of taps. More random spacing will tend to sound smoother, as will just having more taps. You can also modulate the taps, either in level to add a subtle sense of movement, or in time to add a more obvious chorusing or flanging effects. Fast delay time modulation can create lovely shimmering ethereal sounds. Of course, a big factor in the resulting smoothness of the sound is the diffusion. Turn it up to make it smoother. Or down to make it grainier. It's this feature, combined with the multiple taps, that means I don't need to follow the delay with a reverb as well, as I used to on the hardware. Although, of course, you still can if you want to. So Timeless 3 almost seemed like it was built for the task. Funnily enough, it didn't occur to me to try it for this effect until it was already released, so that's really just a happy accident. But if you can set up a bit of MIDI parameter control, you can also do it with other plugins, like Valhalla Ubermod. Here's how to link the feedback parameter if you're a Reaper user. Click the slider to select it. Then the parameter button above the plugin interface. Choose parameter modulation MIDI link. Then in the window that opens, tick link from MIDI or effects parameter. Then click the field below, pick MIDI, CC, then the appropriate controller number. In my case, that's controller 11. The parameter is now linked. Final step is to reverse the control direction which just means dragging both offset and scale parameters all the way over to minus 100%. With that done, Ubermod really shines for this trick. The modulation options make it easy to get that shimmery kind of sound. 
Nice. In theory, it should also be possible to get this effect going with the right kind of reverb plugin. Actually, I've not had as much luck there so far, although there's still a lot of reverb plugins I haven't tried yet. But actually, the first time I did this with plugins instead of my hardware effects was in Reactor. The old Space Master Deluxe macro for Reactor 5 does a surprisingly good job here. And as a bonus, Reactor can also handle the volume pedal part. Arguably, this makes it even better suited to the task than Timeless 3. Of course, back in the day, there wasn't really anywhere I could go from here, effects-wise. None of the effects algorithms in the Digitech unit provided any modulation effects after the reverb, for example. But that's not a problem these days, of course. Lots of different effects can work well here. Chorus or flanger effects, for example. In the headphones video, I had some filters sweeping around, which provided a kind of phasing effect due to the dry signal mixed in. Why not try some rotary speaker simulation and go for a dirtier, more organ-like sound? Or I could take full advantage of the tempo sync features in modern plugins, which were never an option when I was playing with a real drummer, and go with some full-on trance gating. This trick is just as effective and just as much fun as when I first discovered it all those years ago, and it deserves to be used more. Someone should probably make a pedal that does this. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.